Welcome to the Define You Radio Podcast, where class is always in session. Get ready for the life lessons, tips, and stories to help you define your life. And now your host, the drill sergeant with love, Valencia Griffin Wallace. Queens and Queens, it's your girl Valencia Griffin Wallace, and welcome to a Define You Radio uh, Facebook Live edition pop up. So when you get here, go ahead and say hey. Hopefully, hopefully y'all can hear me. So I'm just going to wait a moment before I get started because I think this is a very important topic for women and men who, you know having to deal with being motherless on Mother's Day. So I'm going to wait a moment. And when you get here, go ahead and say, hey, boo. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Make sure you like, love, and share the video. So first of all, my name is Valencia Griffin Wallace. And I almost um, blogged about this today, but I felt it was a very important topic. Hey, hon, thank you guys so much for joining me. Like I said, I almost blogged about this today because it's a very important topic and a lot of people have asked me this being motherless on Mother's Day. So I'm going to just be honest. So for those of you guys that don't know, and like I said, make sure you like, love, share the video and say, hey, boo, I have to throw that in there. So just a little bit about my story. Um, in case you don't know, my mom was a drug addict and she was murdered when I was 17. And now I am 42. So that's a whole lot of motherless mother's days. But I think a lot of times people may take motherless to mean like your mother has died. But if you have a mom that you have cared for, if you're, you know, adopted and maybe don't know your mom, um, if you have a mom that doesn't like to deal with you, these are all things that can make you be motherless. And Mother's Day, so I want to tell you guys that too. And you can find out more about that story in my book, Motherless Child, which if you go to the website, ValenciaGWallace.com, you could connect with me, inbox me if you are interested in that book. I know a lot of the people um, watching and listening have read Motherless Child, and I appreciate you guys' support. So I just wanted to define motherless to you guys. And if you could drop in the comments what motherless means to you, or if you're dealing with something like that, um, I don't want to expose anybody or anything like that. And everybody has to embrace their own truth. Because I'm going to be honest, before my mom died, we did not have a mother-daughter relationship. Addiction took that away from me. And we were more like friends. Um, or I was more like the parent. So after losing her, you know, I was angry and went through a whole series of emotions. But when I became a mom, I was 20. In between then, I never really celebrated Mother's Day. Even now, it's a battle for me because, you know, I have most of my friends do have their and the link is bit.ly slash motherless child. Let me throw that out there. A lot of my friends still have their mom. And so they're out celebrating, making plans. Well, Valencia doesn't do that. Even before my mom died, there was no big Mother's Day plans. Now, I did used to, when my mom passed, I did used to give my grandmother a Mother's Day card or my aunt, um, T. Carla, I love you if you're watching, and things like that. So, but now, you know, my grandmother's no longer here. I lost her in 2017. But I always battled with Mother's Day. I, I always did. And you have to, my only advice to people, and I'm going to specifically at this moment deal with people who have lost their mom, their, like your mom's dead. Let me tell you this. The, the pain doesn't necessarily change with time. You, you may still have your moments of grieving uh, the loss of your mom, especially when everybody is posting, you know, uh, pictures with with their moms on Mother's Day or making plans. You know, I tend to shut down. And after um, 
the show later tonight when we talk more about the book for a mother's heart which is already a bestseller and hot new release you could get that at bit.ly slash four moms 2019 but um i'll shut down just because i don't feel any kind of way towards people that make that those posts but to sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to protect yourself and if you don't have that relationship with your mother or you don't necessarily celebrate Mother's Day or just with anything in life, you really have to do what you have to do to protect yourself. One of the things that I've learned over the time of doing Define You Radio is, and I can't remember what guest said this, but she says your mom teaches you how to, uh, hey, hunt, how to deal with other women, right? So if you look at the relationship you have with your mom now, in the past or whatever else and look at how you deal and have relationships with other women it's a very telling sign um the relationship with my mom was a very different and difficult one all the way up into her death so you know yeah it explains my relationship with a lot of women these days and i keep my circle very small one of the things that i can say um one of the things that I could say that kind of helped me along the way and may help you queens if you don't have a mom or don't have that ideal Cosby show, Brady Bunch, what have you, mom is to find a woman mentor. But in when I say mentor, I'm saying someone that the things that you would normally get from a mother or, you know, by textbook, you should get from a mom that you can get from her, whether it's deep conversations, whether it's an emotional connection or something of that. I have a relationship like with Queen Shannon's mom. I love um, Queen Shannon's mom, Miss Ruth. I love her. And she gives me, when I'm around her, she gives me a very, like a motherly vibe. And there's very few women, uh, Minister Teresa, who I love. Um, there's few women in in my life who i could pull from a, a somewhat mother mothering relationship if that makes sense and that's that works for me that may not be what works for you or you may not have that person in your life um but i'm just telling you what has worked for me i'm not a psychologist so maybe at this time i should say a disclaimer but what i am is a woman who lost her mom in a horrific way and even when my mom wasn't alive we really didn't have that relationship and since i get asked that question often i felt like i would address it because i'm not the only one who don't really celebrate mother's day or you know mother's day has some sort of um feeling behind it to you and sometimes I, I'll spend Mother's Day crying or sometimes, like I said, I'll shut down. Sometimes, you know, my son and my husband will take me out to eat. It, it varies from year to year. And I don't feel bad about that. So if you are grieving in that way for, for your mom or the loss of that relationship, don't feel bad about it and don't deny it to yourself. So that would be my first tip because y'all know class is always in session. Um, definitely having relationships with other women and making sure they're healthy. Making sure they're healthy. Don't emotionally attach yourself to women that are users or abusers or trying to, um, you know, downplay you, downgrade you, whatever. None of that. Um, because that does happen. Like I said, your mom teaches you how to have relationships with other women. Yeah. So th those are some of the tips. And if you have recently lost your mom some people this may be your first year without having your mom to celebrate mother's day with and the one thing i would tell you is don't deny your feelings i'm a firm believer in that because you push things down and you don't deal with it um it'll hurt you more in the long run that's that's so truthful um if your mom may be incapac incapacitated or you're caring for, for your mother to where your mother may be more of a burden than a blessing. That's something you'd have to be honest with yourself about. So your Mother's Day this year may be different from, from last year. You know, maybe, maybe your mom is not 
a good mom. And let's be honest, you could look at the news. You could look at the news and see I, um, examples of that, of mothers doing things to their children that to us is pretty much unthinkable. Uh, Y'all know I'm a child advocate here in Louisiana and I've seen and heard some stuff. And the only thing I could say with being motherless on Mother's Day, you have to find your own way. It's the, the answer may not be in a book. It may not be in this space book live. It may not be anywhere. The, the answer to how you deal with being motherless on Mother's Day is really inside of you, but you have to be the one to decide to deal with that. And that's just me being honest. And I could guarantee you, whether you have your mom or don't, no mom is perfect, which was the, the purpose of some of the honesty and, and some of the, the realness for in the in for a mother's heart. Is you have women that dealt with different things with being a mom, that share some of their struggles and tears and the things that you may need to go to the next day. You may not feel like you're a mother. So you may not celebrate um, Mother's Day because you feel like you're not a good mom. And to that, I say, don't be so hard on yourself. Kids are not easy. Being a woman in, in America, especially, is not easy. Be, being a mother, um, and, a, and I mean a real mom, because even a dog could give birth, that doesn't make it a mother, okay? But being a, a mother, you're out there, you're dealing with so much stuff. Um, you may be feeling suicidal or depressed. You may be dealing with some residue from your past or whatever. I don't know. It's a hard job. It's a hard job. So I just wanted to step in just really quick on this uh, pop-up live because I'm having a lazy day because the weather out here was disgusting and just kind of touch on that. And if you guys have any any comments, I'll go ahead and um, uh, questions or comments, I'll address them while I'm here. Queen Ashanti asks, did, did I experience isolation or retaliation from family members for telling your truth? Yes. I'm going to be honest. Ashanti always, you know, y'all got to love Queen Ashanti Barnes. Y'all follow her. So kind of rewinding back to, to Motherless Child, where I talk about growing up with my mom being in addiction. And I was honest with how everybody treated her, including me, including my family. I was told by a family member that they only received $96 for me and my baby sister. And my book disgusted them. So that's the truth. Of now how they know that they, that they only got $96 for me and my sister, I don't know, didn't ask. I wanted to come back uh, with a text message with every curse word and even invent some. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to lie. And it, it hurt because here it is. I spilled my truth. If you read Motherless Child, you know it was about things I did growing up with my mom being an addict. And, it, and, and if I didn't tell the truth about how she was treated, what's the purpose in doing the book? That's nonfiction. And um, so I wanted to, to, to come up, come and text and do all kinds of stuff. I'm serious. I almost got in the car and, and pulled a G baby. But I said, you know, that I didn't respond at all. And if that person is on this live or if um, that person sees this live, you know, I was the bigger person because I did not expose you. I changed names in the book, but for me to say I'm telling my truth and telling my mom's truth and not expose how my mother was treated would have been a lie. Sometimes people will use their guilt and make you feel some kind of way. So who knows? I may, I may uh, write another book and entitle it 96, but if $96 was all my self-esteem what's worth then shame on you that's real talk shame on you so i'm um, looking in the comments if you guys have any questions i'll be on here for you know another minute or or two so imagine dealing with that um 
and I and I'll answer them and I'll be 100% honest with you guys because at, at the point in in my life where I'm at I had to I learned a long time ago to to not care about what other people think about me or say about me I just want people to be brave enough to say it in my face you know like I talk about uh Facebook gangsters and Facebook bullies or or whatever um you should be brave enough to, to say it to somebody's face or don't say it. That's my 10 cents on that. So kind of rewinding to being motherless on, on, on Mother's Day. And let's talk about the relationships that you may have with your mom that's still alive. And if y'all see me looking this way, it's because I'm the comments over here because my webcam's right here in front of me. Um, being a mom is not easy. And a mom is still a whole person before you come into this world. And I think we forget that. That was the key to me forgiving my mom was realizing she was a whole person before I was thought of. They're, they're not perfect. Um, another question in the comments, what did I, what lessons did I miss from my mom, but was able to learn in order to pass to onto your son? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, what I learned from my mom, I learned how to put on makeup. I learned how to, to walk being knock kneed. okay? These are the things I remember, but um, what did I pass on to my son? That nobody's gonna love you more than your mom, whether she knows how to show it or not. Real quick. When my mom was pregnant with me, and Laquisha, I'm going to get to your question. My mom was 17 when she was pregnant with me. And I actually have the news clip of her and her friends getting in a fight while she was pregnant with me. So the fact that I am the way I am should be no shock. No shock. But I taught my son that, that regardless of how I may act sometimes, and I'm not perfect, but I'm that person that will give my life. And that's what I pass on to Cameron. And also, um, since addiction runs in the family, to stay away from that. And I was always very open and honest. So that's what I learned. Um, and that's what I taught him, you know? So Naquisha asked, what would I say to a person who has a parent that is still an addict and they don't want a relationship with that parent? If y'all know, um, if y'all, yes, not me, but I'm cute though. Thanks queen. Um, I rarely talk about my father for several reasons. Um, and whenever I do talk about him, I'm very honest about it. He is still battling addiction. He's still battling addiction. And I battle with, um, I battle with having a relationship with him. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of do two on one because whether or not I do a, how to, how to deal with being fatherless on father's day and my father's still living, that's a whole other thing. Um, I, sometimes I don't want to deal with him. And then I feel bad for that. But the one thing I would say, I, and I'm going to be 100, if I, um, if he died, I would feel even worse. And it's a battle every day. So the one thing I would say, try if you can to look past the addiction, right? Try to think about X stories, um, X people you know hey who was my mom or who was my dad before they became an addict um because they weren't born addicts a lot of times and I'm not an addiction counselor I just only could tell you my personal experience with having parents dealing with addiction and your parents could could not have substance abuse but other addiction issues right um it's a reason why people would rather do do drugs or alcohol versus dealing with life and i've said this before if i had the tolerance to do to do drugs i probably would be a drug addict but not not me now me in the in the in the back in in the in the in my past because it's easier to not deal with stuff than to deal with it that's why one of my tips that i would leave y'all with definitely on mother's day is to deal with it. Deal with your mom may not be perfect. Deal with your mom may be crap. Deal with your mom, the fact that your mom may be dead. 
deal, just deal with it. You can't go back and ask for another mother. Um, Ashanti asked, do I consider myself a fatherless child? Uh, definitely. Definitely. Um, and like I said, one, one day I am going to write that book about my dad, but there's parts of me that's waiting on him to forgive himself and, and to heal. Because everything to me, when you write a book, uh, hey, hun, everything to me, I gave your, I gave your mom a, a shout out, Queen Shannon. Every, everything to me has to have a conclusion. My relationship with my mother had a conclusion only because she died. So it was finished for her. It wasn't finished for me. So I had to, to finish it and forgive her. The relationship with my father, like I said, is something I, I battle with. Because I, I was a daddy's girl. I would fight you behind my daddy. But the, the daddy who I had in my mind is not the actual daddy I have. So, yes, I definitely um, consider myself a, a fatherless child. That's why I write so much. And that's one of the reasons why I said um, I'm, I'm going to publish at least one book a year until the day I die. That was the gift um, from both of my parents. So it kind of brings it back to like, if you don't have the, a perfect relationship with your parents, for instance, there is something that they pass through your, their very DNA. That's that was worth it. You know, my I, my mom was a writer. My dad is very was a very creative person. So I do what I do because of them, even though they were, you know, crap parents. You can always find something good, even if it's like this little, you can always find something good in the worst places. And the worst place may be in your parents. Um, if you're if your mother was like, you know, your parents, you know, your mom's died, um, spend time thinking about the good things. Like I said, my mom was a drug addict the majority of her life um, that I was here for, if that makes sense. But I remember watching her uh, burning eyeliner. Thank God, you know, we got better eyeliner today. But I remember watching her burn eyeliner, uh, the wood eyeliner and put it on her eyes. I remember her saying, you know, you knock me, so I'm gonna have to teach you how to walk cute. Um, I remember that. I mean, I have too many good memories, but they're still there. So even if you have that one or two, you know, it's still there. You hang on to that one good. It may be a whole lot of negative. You know, I don't think about, you know, the time I bust up in the crack house because I want I hadn't seen my mom for weeks and I wanted to see her. I bust up in the whole crack house. I don't think about that. You know, well, I think about it and laugh now, but I'm at a different place. So the one good memory you have, and it may be from when you were two or three. It may be from when you are, or two, you know, two, three or whatever. It, it, and let's say you don't have no memories at all. Let's say you were adopted or your parents passed you off. You never knew. At least they gave you birth. If you don't have nothing else to hang on to, hang on to that. Look up the, the, um, uh, what you call it, the stats of abortion. You could have been aborted. These are facts. But apparently the 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 mother, good, bad, or, or indifferent, said, okay, I may can't deal with this kid. I may not love this kid enough to take care of them, but I love this kid enough to give them life. That fact alone, I could drop the mic and walk away. Oh, look at my husband. Um, what is the best gift a mother wife could get? You're so crazy. Um, we'll talk about that when I get off of here. I just want office stuff. Okay. I just want stuff in, in my office and that that's what I want for Mother's Day. Y'all don't, don't, don't encourage him. Don't encourage Mr. Wallace's foolishness. Um, 
So that's all I have to say. I will wait a minute or two to see if anybody has any other questions. Um, I'm not an expert with dealing with your feelings. I'm just a, a real woman who is 42 and who lost their mom when they were 17. So I have a, a lot more real experience than most. And I'm honest about it. People, people don't want to be honest or they'll tell you get over it or whatever else, but that's not reality. That's not. Um, it's a hard thing. And like I said, you know, if you connected with me on social media, most likely I, I'll be shut down for the weekend because I have to process it and deal with it my own way, even after all this time. So I'm going to rewind the tips. And my husband it just came home, y'all. He is so disrespectful. He is so very disrespectful. But um, just to kind of rewind the tips, um, my number one tip with being motherless on Mother's Day or for fatherless on Father's Day, I may or may not deal with that um, then, is to, is to just deal with it. Don't deny it. Don't feel bad about it. Don't feel guilty. It is what it is. Deal with it. Your mom may be dead. She may be incapacitated. She may suck. Just deal with it. Um, close Number two, close relationships. Find, you know, your connection with, with women that may have motherly qualities and be mindful of that. So your, 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 and friendship. The people you you connect with, your friends' moms. Like I said, I'm I love Shannon's mom. Um, those things, those things do help. They help, but at, but at the end of the day, you are a motherless child. Claim it. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't feel bad about it. Don't feel like it's just you. Um. If you need to cry on Mother's Day, if you need to go hit a punch bag, if you need to go run a couple of miles like Rocky, do what you need to do. Is it fair? No, it, it freaking sucks. But it is what it is. Um, what else? I think that was it. That was all I had to say. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you guys have supported the movement of moms that said you know what they don't give you a manual when you leave the hospital so let let's just kind of break this thing down that'll keep you uh going for a mother's heart get it while it's still on um mother's day special for 2.99 the link for that is bit.ly slash for moms 2019 you can follow me on social media or whatever, connect with me, whatever. Y'all know I give it to you straight because guess what? It is what it is. So it's on the way. That's real talk. So with that being said, peace, love. Thank you guys so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Thank you for listening. Connect with the show at the Define You Facebook. Until next time, remember your past doesn't define you. It gives you definition, and what you do with that is up to you.